No, it's preaching time. How many ready for the word? As we are getting ready to start a new series of messages called Double. A new series of messages called Double. Double. We started this, Isaiah 61 and 7, and God says, I will give you double. I will give you double for your former shame. The guilt, the shame, the embarrassment, the fear, the ups, the downs, the ins, the out. God said, I am the God of restoration. And I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locusts have eaten. I will give back to you. How many ready for double? No, you all not excited about that. How many ready for double? Amen. Let's all stand as we get ready to go into the word of the Lord for here at Restoration. It is our custom to stand for the reading of God's word as we go to 1 Samuel. Give me a little bit more, a little bit more on the mic. Just a little, you know I like to blow people's head off. Amen. 1 Samuel, first chapter, as we are getting ready to delve into scripture. And I'm excited as God has been speaking to me all week. He speaks to me first before I share it with you. And I pray that he crystallizes the words that he's given me with continuity of thought. And that you will be able to receive this word. Do understand you are not here by coincidence. You were summoned here by the Holy Ghost to hear this word today. And I believe there are no coincidences in the kingdom of God. So let's go to 1 Samuel, 1 chapter. If you got it, say, I got it. Allow me to read in your ears, please. Now, there was a certain man of Ramathium, Zophium of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkinah the son of Jehoram, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuphath, and Aphrathite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city, city yearly, somebody say yearly, to worship and sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkina offered, he gave of Penina his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions. And unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion. Double portion is actually what that means. For he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her for to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. That's Penina provoking Hannah. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkina her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in shallow and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid but will give unto thy handmaid a man child then I will give unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall no razor come upon his head basically suggesting he would be a Nazarite and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth 
Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition. That thou hast asked of him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his precious word. As our principal thought will be on today. A fight for the promise. A fight for the promise. Let's pray before you sit down. Spirit of the living God. Have your way in this place. Move as only you can. Speak through our mouth like fire. We pray that the dichotomy of hearing and doing will merge into one, producing seed that falls on good ground. And we pray that you would hide us in the shadow, under the shadow of your wings, that no imp or devil will be able to track or trace us in the realm of the spirit, because on today we are going higher. We're going deeper. And the word that you've given us is prophetic concerning the days ahead. We give you praise, glory, and honor. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to give God praise before you take your seats. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him worship. Oh, you can do better than that. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and give him worship. Yes, Lord. You may be seated. We're going to ask that there is no walking at this time. No walking at this time. As we are getting ready to hear what thus said the Lord. Elkina is the husband of two wives. And before we delve into the abyss of this text. I think we need to stop there and acknowledge the fact that he had not one, but two wives. And we can see a real problem from the beginning of this text. Brother Alkina, you already asking for problems when you decided to have more than one wife. For the Bible says in Genesis 2.24 that a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to him a wife, not wives. And the two, not the five, shall become one flesh. <laughs> and Elkinah has already started a problem by having one, not one but two wives. Elkinah, he's a religious man. He's a God-fearing man. And Elkinah, according to scripture, he was sacrificed yearly in Shiloh. This is proven. He went yearly before the Lord to give, to worship, and to sacrifice. Now, with the two wives, we have one by the name of Hannah, and the other one is Panina. And the scripture makes it very clear that Hannah's womb had been shut up. Panina had children. Hannah did not. Uh, a, 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 a woman back during that time in season, pay attention wonderful people, was looked at as barren in biblical times and ridiculed in many instances for not having children. You were supposed to be able to produce at a certain time, at a certain season. But the book makes it very clear, the Bible, the Holy Writ, that the Lord had shut up her womb. Isn't it amazing how we can make assumptions about people? 
and don't have a clue of what God is doing in their life. Sometimes we think we're so smart and we begin to make erroneous statements because we have not really sought the Lord concerning this, that, or the other. We start assuming what God should be doing at a particular time and at a particular season. We act like what we know what God should be doing doing we just think we Jesus Jr. Holy Ghost understudy but the word of God makes it very clear in Isaiah 55 and 8 he says my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways as the heavens is higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways so we got to come before the Lord humbly not acting like we know everything about God. We know him for the time and then we know him for the season. And when the time and season is over, you got to get to know him all over again. Elkanah was a giving man. Every time he went, he would go to sacrifice and he would take his family with them. And the Bible makes it very clear that he gave worthy portions unto Hannah because he loved her. That's a message all by itself that he did more for Hannah because of love. In other words, she was favored and you got to get used to wearing favor wonderful people of God because God will do more for the favored than anyone else he will cause his son to rise on the just as well as the unjust is a rain on the just as well as the unjust but when you're loved and favored by God your resume will turn up at the top of the pile all of a sudden you have Access that other people do not have. All of a sudden, there's doors that are open for you because you are favored. Are there any favored people in the room? Somebody shout, I'm favored. And he gave double portions to her, good blessings to her. But you know, having favor, check it out what I'm about to say, and unanswered prayers can be stressful. I will say that again. You're favored in one instance, but over here you have unanswered prayers. And the Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. I'm praying about something. I'm believing something is going to take place and it does not take place. Is there anybody in the room that knows what it's like to pray and pray and ask and pray and a week went past, a month went past, a year went past and nothing took place and the Bible said year after year Hannah was waiting on something and it did not happen praying and trusting praying and believing your favorite and blessed over here but over here all hell is breaking loose your favorite over here, you save, you sanctified, you filled with the Holy Ghost, but your prayer concerning your family is not being answered, and they're going to hell in a handbasket, and you're saying, when, God, are you going to answer this prayer? Thank you for what you blessed me with, but this over here, Hannah did not have a baby. Hannah wanted a baby. She wanted her dream to come to pass. She wanted her vision to come to pass. She was getting worthy portions. But over here, is there anybody in this room that knows what it's like to be over here? I, I, see, it's nobody here but you and me, so we might as well have this conversation because there are times uh, you are wondering, where is God? 
When are you going to? You told me to decree. You told me to declare. You told me to stand on the word. You said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock in the door. I've been knocking and knocking and knocking and nothing is happening. I'm about ready to backslide because you are not answering my prayer. See, I want to be real with the people of God because there have been some times in my life I have wondered, am I saved? I shouted on Sunday. I was spinning around. I was rolling in the floor, and I got up from rolling, and still all hell was breaking loose in my life. Still, I had unanswered prayers. Still, I'm waiting on the baby. I'm waiting for the dream. I'm waiting for the vision. Because, you know, we talk about this every year. We have our vision and our goals and what we're going to do. And we write it down and we make it plain and we tell everybody what's going to happen. And then the end of the year comes and we're still in the same place. Do I have any real people in here? Don't leave me out here by myself because I need to talk to some real people. <laughs> then add an insult to injury. They go year after year and my enemy is going with me to provoke me, to irritate me remind me of what I don't have. I don't know if you've met anybody like that, but I have met some people that are saying, you're not blessed unless you got what I got. You don't got it going on unless you got what I have. And it's irritating when somebody is suggesting that the only way you're going to be complete is to be like me. The only way you are whole if you go down my road. The only way you're going to be blessed if you do things my way. The Holy Spirit moves variously. Not just in one way. He don't have to just open a door the way he did for you. But he got another way for me. Can I go through that door the way he wants me to go through it without going down your road? <laughs> Somebody say, help me, Lord. I mean, Sister Panina, she got an evil disposition. She said, you don't have nothing going on. You don't have no children. I got children. And I'm going to tell you something else was going on with Panina. She had envy in her heart because the Bible says that Hannah was blessed with worthy portion. Let me tell you, when you're favored, it will provoke jealousy and envy from other people. Y'all didn't hear me on that side. Let me talk to you. When you're blessed, it will provoke envy and jealousy and other people. Y'all don't get it. Let me come back over here. When you're blessed, it will provoke envy and jealousy from other people. Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in the storehouse. I'm blessed in my coming. I'm blessed in my going. I'm blessed. And you're wasting your time being jealous of me. God favored me. Oh, so I just said a whole lot right there. I said God favored me. I may not have everything I want, but the favor of God is on my life. Look at your neighbor again. Say, I'm blessed. Miss Panina it has jealousy because favor rested upon the one that did not have what Panina had. She wanted the children. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You want to be married. You want children. You want your own house, own business. These are good things to have. There's nothing wrong with that. But the Bible said, the Lord shut up her womb. 
blessed and shut up. Come on now. Let's talk about the oxymoron of God. <laughs> the twofold of God when he favors you over here and shuts you down over there. Oh, I got to talk to somebody that's real, baby, because I know what it's like to be blessed and talented and shut down over here. Wondering when, Lord, when, where, Lord, where, who, Lord, who. <sighs> okay, so let me get into something. Let me get into something. Let me get into something. I got to get into something that I, that I want you to walk away with today that may give you some answers to some questions that you've had secretly before the Lord while you happy over here and mad over here. <laughs> while you happy over here and angry over here. While you say a hallelujah and... <laughs> wonderful people that Hannah had to wait on the timing and the season of God because Hannah was not getting ready to birth just a child she was birthing a prophet a priest and a judge the only place in scripture where a prophet is birthed and he has the mantle of prophet, priest, and judge. The only other person in that like that was Jesus. So she's not birthing something that's common. Is it possible God is having you wait? Because you're getting ready to birth something that's uncommon, that has never been seen before. Is it possible what you are going through in the season of waiting is because something is coming where eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for you and for the world and for the community. And for your family. So all this time. Is it possible all the hell you've been through. It's because you're getting ready to burst forth something that has never been seen. Y'all not with me today. Y'all not talking to me. Is it possible all the tears that you've cried. All the waiting, the bitterness, the guilt. The Bible is clear. Hannah was crying bitterly. Bitter tears. Because she should be having something that's normal. Is it possible that what's going to be birthed is not normal? We are so busy always trying to fit in, always trying to be in the line, always trying to be a part, to dress the same, to look the same, to act the same, to do the same. And God said, I never called you to be the same. That's why you've experienced so much rejection in your life. That's why, because I have called you out of the mundane, out of the same. I've called you out, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. That's why some of you all don't understand your gift. And you've been greatly misunderstood because you were trying to fit in when God wanted you to stand out. And now you are bitterly crying. Bitterly weeping. Oh, somebody say, help me, Lord. Now, I got to tell you something. Because it's uncommon, God sets it up where he puts you in a position, listen, to provoke you to pray. This is not the common prayer. 
he provokes you with a radical prayer. Because the birthing and travail is the only way it's going to come out. It's just not going to come out with your plan. And who you talking to. And who you writing. And who you get. And, and the people that you know. He said no. You're going to have to birth. What I put in you. Radically. Because what's in you is radical. And you're going to have to birth it out. Is it any wonder. That this past week was the week of prayer revival. And only those that sh really want to get this out of them really got a request. They were showing up. Well, you know what they said? See, see, when you really, we, I was just talking to a preacher about this. When, <coughs> when you're really hungry, you're going to make the way, even if it's for 15 minutes. I got to get to church. I got to get to the altar because I'm hungry. Listen, and so Hannah is at the altar. She's praying. She's praying a Hannah's drunk prayer. Because I'm going to tell you, there are some things that you won't get from God until you are praying like a drunk man. I'm going to tell you again, some things you won't get from God until you are praying like a drunk woman. When you come out of yourself and stop being so sedity and start worrying about your stockings and your shoes and your hair and how people are looking at you. When you stop, get, when you got a Hannah's radical prayer and you're saying, God, I want a baby and I'm not playing and I'm going to stay at the horns of the altar until. I get it. Is there any, do I have any Hannahs in the house? Because I may only be talking to two or three of you. But if you are a Hannah in the house and you saying there's something on the inside of me and I got to get it out. I dare you to just, just for 20 seconds, just start interceding. Just start praying. Grab you another Hannah right now and start praying. Pray out of yourself. Pray until something happens. Push until something happens. I need some Hannahs in the house. <laughs> Are there any Hannahs in the house? Grab somebody. Pray. Pray. See, you're too lazy. You don't want this. You don't want this. But if you want it, I dare you for 30 seconds to begin to decree and declare. Ask God for what you want. Ask God for what you need. Pray. 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 God, I want a baby. God, bless my soul. Bless my family. Bless my mind. Bless my spirit. God, I want a baby. God, I want a baby. This is pushing season. It's pushing season. The season of open heavens. But you're going to have to push to have it. This is the season of open heavens, but you're going to have to push to have it. If you're lazy and slowful and procrastinating, it's not going to work. But I dare you for a few minutes to get outside of yourself and pray, pray the effectual, fervent prayer, bold prayer of the righteous availeth much. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want the vision? How bad do you want the dream? How bad do you want to see it come to pass? Your procrastination, your slowfulness is not going to get it. Somebody say pray. Somebody say pray. <sighs> then you've been through so much you're going to need the strength to do this. Because some of you all has lost strength. You don't have the strength to push. You've been through too, so, so much. You've seen so much. You don't have the strength to push. Do me a favor. Push on your neighbor. 
push on them, push on them, push, push. Tell them you gotta push, you gotta push, you gotta push, you gotta push. It's gonna require labor. Now check it out. This is where I'm gonna close. And this is what you need on the day. She talked to the Lord. This is what she said to him. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, then will I give unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. She made a vow to the Lord. She said, if you give me this blessing, I'll give it back to you. When I was coming up in the church of God in Christ, we say, I made a vow to the Lord and I won't take it back. I made a vow to the Lord and I won't take it. I made a vow to the Lord. So y'all not, see, see, y'all know nothing about that. We were singing for an hour. I made a vow to the Lord and I won't take it back. If you want this blessing, it's going to require a vow. That which he gives to you, you're going to have to give it back to him. Oh, God. I said that which he gives to you, you're going to have to give it back to him. And it's through you giving it back to him that he's going to use it according to his, his way. He's going to use it according to how he has in mind. Not so you can show off to all your enemies. Not so you can show, uh, look at me now. The devil is a liar. When you get this blessing, he said, give it back to me. He says, it comes with a vow. 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 When God gets ready to honor this request, because he's going to do it. I just said he's going to do it. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all ye may ask, above all you may think or imagine I, maybe it's not for you maybe I'm preaching to myself and maybe it's just for me and my wife but if it's just five of y'all the number of grace that's with me today and believe that this is going to be your year this is your shifting year this is the year that you're going to birth forth this is the year it's going to come forth this is the year your prayers are going to be answered this is the year of open heavens this is the year in other words there's nothing standing in the way from you getting what you want to get from God and I got a word for you oh taste and see that the Lord is good blessed is the man that put his trust in him only thing you gotta do this year is radically pray. Only thing you gotta do this year is radically ask. Only thing you gotta do is get outside yourself and stop looking around, worrying about this, that, or the other, and ask God for a baby. And God said, when you get out of yourself, this time I'm gonna answer your prayer you didn't know that i was getting ready to do exceedingly abundantly above all ye may ask think or imagine what's in you is not coming you had to wait but that's all right for they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up on wings as eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, how to wait on you. Teach me, Lord, how to wait in your presence. For in his presence, there's fullness of joy, right hands, pleasure forevermore somebody say yes lord i prophesy to five of you maybe ten of you this will be your season fresh fire fresh anointing
press oil be upon you. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Your season is right here. Somebody say push until you see it happen. Push this year. Get everything out of the way. Don't let nothing stand in your way. No distractions. Look at your neighbor and say no distractions. No distractions. Get it out of your way. I got things to do. I got places to go. I don't have time for no drama. I don't have time for no foolishness. I don't have time to be arguing and fussing and fighting with you. But this year, you're going to find me fighting on my knees. And the text says, fight for the promise. Fight until you see it happen. Fight until you cross over. Fight until darkness becomes light. Fight with our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily prayer and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. I'm gonna fight in prayer because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Fight for your family. Fight for your sister. Fight for your brother. Fight for community. Fight until we see COVID-19 come down. Fight for the children. Fight for your marriage. Fight. It requires a battle in the spirit and the kingdom of heaven. Suffering violence. But the violent take it by force. You got to take it by force. It's yours. If you take it, it belongs to you. And tell the devil, I'm coming back for everything that's mine. Mine. My season. My day. Somebody give him praise in the house. Hey. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Wait. Your praise is too low for this level of blessing. I say your praise is too low for this level of blessing. You, it got to be more radical. It's too low. Take it up. 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 Take it up higher. 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 Uh-uh. You can't get this level of blessing. God said, you're going to have to be radical this year. This baby getting ready to be delivered. And, uh, and you can't be passive and procrastinating and just, oh, well. No, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. It's going to require a Hannah's prayer. I decree and declare that some of your tongues are about to change. I'm going to take you to another level in your tongues. 
so you can war in the spirit at that level. Where you are right here, it's not going to work because you're fighting a new level of demons that have showed up in your life. You're going to have to walk through your house decreeing and declaring this year. Devil, you coming up out of here. I'm more than a conqueror. Devil, you coming up out of my children. I'm not burying them. I'm not taking them to jail. They're going to be saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Enough is enough. Uh-oh. Y'all don't want this. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, enough is enough. Oh, oh, oh. I'm getting ready to start preaching like I lost my mind. I'm getting ready to start preaching because the enemy has fought me since I was a little boy and I owe him something. This is going to be the season. I forgot to tell you, well, restoration, it means God settles accounts. Restoration means God settles accounts. God's getting ready to settle some stuff this year. Stuff that's been going on and on. Drama that's been going on in your life and it just seemed like it won't stop. God says I'm putting an end to it this year. You will not leave out of this year crying that same cry, talking about the same thing, wondering about the same thing, worried all the time about the same thing. He said, I'm getting ready to lift you up above the circumstances. I'm going to set you on high. Get ready to fly like an eagle. Get ready to touch the sky. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm about to fly. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I'm getting ready. It's going to require some radical people. I'm not doing this no lazy stuff no more. I'm not taking no junk off of nobody. Not this year, baby. You got the wrong one. I'm coming in the authority of the Holy Ghost. So you might as well get out of my way, devil. You might as well, because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. You are getting out of my way this year. Think whatever you want to think. Believe whatever you want to believe. Talk about me. Say whatever you want to say. It don't make no never mind. I'm too old to worry about it. It just doesn't matter. It just don't matter. It don't matter. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I don't care what you think about me. I care about what God thinks about me and me crossing over. The problem is I was associated with people that was feeding my dysfunctions. I was associated with people that was feeding my dysfunctions, and now they're mad because I'm leaving. You felt my fear, you felt my guilt, you felt fear, my shame, my doubt, my disbelief, and now you're upset because I shut the door on all that foolishness. Later, Gator, after Wild Cracker Town, I'm going to give you the deuces sign this year because I got to go. Oh! I, oh, whew, I got to go. I tell you, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I'm not having no, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I already said I'm sorry. I already said please forgive me. And you want me to hold on to all that junk from yesterday. The devil is a liar. Think whatever you want to think. I got to go. I already apologized five times, and you want me to apologize five times more. The devil is a liar. Not this year, baby. You got the wrong one. I'm not doing it. You will not chain me to guilt. For my Savior took my guilt. He took my shame on his back over 2,000 years ago. I'm not living like that. Don't let your children do it to you. Don't let your grandchildren do it to you. Yeah, you, you didn't do everything right, and they ain't doing everything right either. Pa bye. Bye. You will not hold me to who I was yesterday when I keep covering you, child, and all your foolishness. Not this year. Look at your neighbor and say, not this time. Not this year. Not this year. Not, this is the beginning of the year, sis. Not this year. Not this year. Not. I'm not doing it. 
I'm not doing it. I'm going to scroll, alt, delete. I'm going to scroll. Y'all not with me. I'm on the computer. I'm going to scroll, alt, delete. I'm going to clear the whole screen and say, in the beginning, James created what God called him to create. <clears throat> That's what I'm doing. I'm not doing it. I'll walk past you like you walk past me. I'm not going to be trying to speak if you're not speaking. <clears throat> I'm not doing it this time. I'm going out of my way. I went all the way around just to make sure I was in the right spirit. You're going to keep on that stuff? Okay, bye. I'm going to walk right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I made a vow to the Lord and I won't take it. Y'all don't want it. Because I've gotten to a point. I've seen so much. But I've seen the faithfulness of God. That he's the only one that's been steady through all this stuff. He's the only one that remained. He's the only one I told my business to that ain't tell nobody. He's the only one that kept my secrets. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker don't know because of him. They know because of somebody told them. And so now, I haven't been able to birth forth because I'm so busy being hunted and provoked by these people, by this enemy, sister and brother Penina, that keeps showing up. I'm trying to sacrifice. I'm already dealing with what I don't have, and you reminded me of it. Can't do it no more. I'm not going to do it anymore. I will shut you off. And not out of maliciousness. Out of grace and love in my heart. See, we, we forget the verse that says, guard your heart. With all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. We don't guard our heart. We give it to everybody. We love everybody. And this, you should love everybody. But you got to have boundaries. And most of us in this place wrestle with that. We don't know how to say no. But you're going to have to say no and mean it. No and love. No. I'm, I'm not just not doing it. No. 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 You can't borrow the money. No. You can't have the keys. No. You can't spend the night. No. Too many of us in this place are drained from overdoing it. You overdoing it. Your heart is from here to Texas. To California. Just pieces of your heart. And you spending all this time picking up the pieces that is broken. Enough. Okay. You got to reckon it to be dead. It may be alive to them, but it has to be dead to you. Reckon it to be dead. Reckon it to be dead. It's okay now. I've, I've, I've said everything I'm going to say. It's all right. I've done everything I can do. I'm going to reckon it to be dead. And this year, I'm going to go on. I'm not carrying that weight. I'm fighting for the promise. You'll catch up later. <clears throat> You'll see. You'll see. After the baby is birthed, then we can have a conversation at Starbucks. <clears throat> but in the meantime, because if you pay attention, Hannah was alone. She wasn't on the phone. She wasn't on the text. She was talking to God. Because he was the only one that could give the strength to birth forth the baby. Talk to the one that can give you what you're looking for. That's where your fight is. She fought with God, not Panina. 
she never fought with Panina. Panina got on her nerves. But she didn't do that. Hannah went to the altar. Change your strategy. Change your strategy. This year, before you walk out of this door at 1521 North Park, change your strategy. Listen to me. I told my wife, stuff going on right now. Mm -mm. I'm like, that's a distraction. I don't care who it is, what it is, it's a distraction. I got a church to run. Well, folks are coming to eat. I don't have time for that foolishness. There comes a time in your spiritual walk where you say, I'm too old for this. I can't do this. I'm too old. Too old. We only promise 70 years. Anything after that is by God's strength. How much time have you wasted? If this is going to be the year of possibilities, that means you've got to maximize every moment. Every second of your life. We're going to maximize it with things that are positive. We're going to maximize it. Every second, I'm not wasting that a moment. When the conversation is going the wrong way, this is not beneficial to me. It's not helping me. I could be reading. I could be going somewhere. I could be reading about investments. <clears throat> the only, I try not to regret anything. I really do. But when I look back at my past, I said, I just wasted too much time on oh, foolishness. Stuff that didn't mean nothing. Not anymore. Not anymore. I'm not doing it. The only reason we sit in this building is because I was diligent to search. The realtor was trying to send us all the way to Bartonville. I said, My people are not going out there. <coughs> <laughs> Y'all not listening. I, I told him. I said, my people are not going. He had us way down on Farmington Road, all off in the sticks. I said, the people, they're not, they not coming here. He said, well, there was a place that another realtor told me about. It's a place. He said, go and thank you. That's all that sweat. I said, there's a, a place over there on, on Park Road. He said, um, I haven't seen it. I said, what's the address? I came over here, came up, and when I seen it, I said, this is it. I knew when I drove up, this is it. I stopped making phone calls. I would come to this place and walk around it like it was a Jericho wall. I would be praying. They wouldn't even give us the key because COVID had started. <coughs> and with the Jehovah's Witness, their establishment is in New York. And everything was shut down. And to close on a building, everybody has to sign the closing papers. And some of them was shut away in senior citizen homes. <coughs> I came in front of the door. I put on some shouting music and went to dancing in front of the door. <coughs> the next day, they say the key is ready. I didn't care who was going past. In their truck, their car, their bicycle, I was. <laughs> hey! Because I'm radical like that. And some of y'all just be. 
Oh, I'll be glad when we get to 1.30 so I can go home, so I can get on Facebook. <laughs> we in here because God said he ready. And then I got the key. I said, come on in. That's how radical I am. I am not playing. So all these folk that's playing church, you're going to have to catch up with me this year because I'm going to be down the way. <clears throat> uh, do I have anybody that's with me, though? You with me? Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. 